Mary Meet, Annie here, from my personal poetry writing, A Reflection for December 10th. The cold rain falls, becoming one with the creek, becoming one with the river, becoming one with the sea, each into the other becoming greater. Out of its comings together, nature is constantly renewed. Everything with ease or struggle experiences union, and in the end, an immensity with nothing claiming insignificance. I let go to see where I go. Oh, what I am becoming. What will I bring into myself today? I remember when I wrote this poem. I've been going through an extended period of things seeming to go in all kinds of directions in my life, and all of a sudden, things came together. At a time, I really had thought that wasn't possible. And as it happened, I realized it hadn't been happening because I had been the errant energy in the mix. And water, as she is wont to do, comforted, encouraged, and softened, harking back to yesterday's reflection, she definitely whispered to me, let go to see where you go. A confluence, that's the name of today's reflection, is the joining of two streams or rivers into one joint flow. And it's also a psychological term that applies to aspects of the psyche coming together. And even aspects of various people coming together. I found this beautiful inspiration in a larger article, and the article is worth the read at Psychology Today. That's at psychologytoday.com. The article is by Bernard L. de Coven. It's entitled, Confluence, Being Together. I especially enjoy the article because confluence was something one of my earlier teachers taught as a practice. She, can, she said that we can stand at a riverside and watch it flow, or we can join the flow. And that once we've joined the flow, it then joins other flows and other flows, one into the other. This paragraph from Bernard's article is, well, it's pure poetry to me. He wrote, I like to think of confluence naturally as a river and, of course, flow. Well, as a meeting of rivers and us. There are those of us just touching the river's edge, standing on the banks. And for those of us at the edge, there's a sense, a sound in the very background of our beings, of harmony, of unheard voices, rivulets of consciousness, joining the rhythms of the water. Connected by the merging rivers to those who have gone deeper to be moved together by the crossing currents until the sheer power of their collective presence washes away all fear all distinctions, all things that divide them one from themselves from the other, and they become so deeply immersed in the rivers and in each other's presence that it seems nothing is left of them but their laughter. And the whole river is set alight, and even the people on the shores seem to sparkle. And as I do every year when I read this about confluence again, I think of one of my favorite chants and I chant it. The chants Diane Hildebrun Hull's chant, The River's Flowing. Do you know the chant? The river is flowing, flowing and growing. The river is flowing down to the sea. Oh, mother, carry me, your child I will always be. Oh, mother, carry me down to the sea. <laughs> that chant's a bit of an earworm for me, so when I think of it and then I chant it, I will keep chanting it for days. <laughs> Those of you who know that chant, it's probably going to happen to you now, isn't it? But that's okay. Let the waters, late in this season of water, borrowing again from Bernard, carry us away so that there is nothing left of us but our laughter. I wish you mirth and reverence in this season of Samhain. Mary Part. <laughs>